Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Wagstaff. I'm a senior here at St. George's School. I am a cross-country runner, a track jumper, a water skier, a beekeeper, and above all else, I'm a science nerd. And today, I'm here to talk about creativity. So I'm going to take you back to when I learned I was a true science nerd. It was when I was six, and my sister and I one day had nothing to do, so we were playing with our dolls. What we were doing is we were designing parachutes for our dolls, which we were throwing off of our deck, which was 15 feet up in the air. We had a few different types of designs, and we'd either watch the baby doll fall gracefully to the ground or fall with a hard impact. And after a few times of doing this, my sister and I learned it wasn't efficient because we had to run around our house and then up a huge hill and through the door and then back out onto our deck. So we had to fix the problem. So what did we do? We did the only thing reasonable. We built a homemade elevator. <laughs> we used rope, a folding chair, and the railings on our deck to create a pulley system. So we could pull each other up to the deck with a baby doll in our arms. We worked on it for hours, and we decided to test it out. It worked flawlessly until my sister was several feet up in the air, and the chair folded with my sister seatbelted in. <laughs> as I look back on this event as a senior in high school, I've learned a few things. First, sometimes a safety precaution is more of a deterrent than actually a safety item. And second, creativity can be found in anything that we love doing. And so I've always known creativity had to do with finding something you're passionate about and then discovering new things. And, or like other people have described it to me and how, well, it's just sitting down in an art classroom or on a stage singing or something like that. But I guess I never learned how I could be creative through the things I do. How was I supposed to be creative in beekeeping or science? And so what I've learned is there are a few things that you can do to be creative. And that's what I've learned within the last year. Ray Bradbury once said, don't think. Thinking is the enemy of creativity. Thinking is self-conscious, and anything self-conscious is lousy. I guess for me, I never realized I always tried to put too much effort into my creativity, and I learned that you can't do that. So I tried to do this, I wanted to do this senior project, this senior science thesis, and all summer I tried to think of ideas, but I couldn't. What I didn't realize was the idea was in front of me the whole time. This summer, I worked in a research metallurgical lab. This lab researches aluminum and its varying properties. Sounds really cool, but the problem was I was at the bottom of the food chain, so I got to do the jobs that no one else wanted. Whether it was sweeping floors or organizing thousands of nuts and bolts, that was my job. But luckily, I survived the summer through running a scanning electron microscope, or as I call it, the SEM. A sample can be placed in the SEM, and then the microscope scans it with electrons and then produces an image. I would spend countless hours on this SEM looking at metallurgical samples. I understand looking at metallurgical samples for hours on end sounds really boring, but I promise you it is any 17-year-old girl's dreams to do that. <laughs> so then I learned through this that I could be creative in anything using this electron microscope. I, throughout the summer, I, use, I scanned spiders and metal and even chemical compounds, and it just made me learn that there were limitless ideas I could use. So I finally decided what I wanted to research. I wanted to study about the differences of bees around the world. I've obtained bees from Brazil, Germany, Thailand, South Korea, and the United States. And I wanted to distinguish between them. But, and I wanted to use the SEM, but I, I just didn't know how. So first, I had to figure out how to put the bee in the SEM. Because to put samples in the SEM, it has to be conductive. And bees, last time I checked, are not conductive. So I had to plate them in a gold palladium. It makes it look silver, as in the picture that is shown on the slide. Then, after I'd focus on the B-Wing, once I put it in the SEM, this was my result. What I found was amazing. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen. I would spend hours just zooming in on the wing, on different parts, and 
I never realized I would just lose track of time doing something so school and researchy. And then eventually, I still needed to find a way to distinguish between the bee species. So what I learned through my research was there are different ways to do it, but I couldn't decide on how. And there were a lot of things about the wing that I was always amazed by flight and everything. And so there is a quote about bees, and it says, according to all known laws of aviation, a bee should not be able to fly. Its small wings are, its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. Bees can defy the laws of aviation. That's amazing. And I really just wanted to study it. So I learned that I could do a bunch of different things, such as measure the length of the abdomen or the width of the hind leg, but that stuff seemed boring to me. Who does that stuff? <laughs> so what I found, because I'm interested in wings, is I found that there are two veins on the wing that you can measure with a ratio, and that sounds amazing to me. So that's what I'm doing for my project. I put in the SEM, and I'd zoom in, and this is my result. The ratio is known as the cubital index. So of course, now that is what I'm researching. So these are a bunch of different pictures that I've taken of each of the species of bees. To find the ratio, or the cubital index, I would measure the length of the vein, which is indicated by the blue arrow, and then divide it by the length of the wing, which is indicated by the red arrow. I guess when I started the project, I learned about the cubital index. It's a ratio. I was like, oh, I, I know ratios. One to two, two to three. But I didn't really realize there was a huge difference on a microscopic level. I was wrong. The Thailand bees were drastically different from the Brazilian bees, which were then completely different than the bees from the United States. So I started getting my bees and coding them and then putting in the SEM, and I've learned things that I could have never learned through my web-based research. This is a picture of a bee wing from Thailand. First of all, I did not know that bees had hair on their wings. That seemed kind of weird to me. And also, I learned that the small circles that you're seeing on the slide, that's pollen. Is that how they collect pollen? So that got me interested in this. I'm also always interested in flight and everything. And after measuring a few of the ratios, I learned that generally, one of the wings is always smaller proportionally than the other wing. And at first, I was like, that's really weird. It must just be this bee sample. So I put in the next one. Same thing. I was like, this is really weird. Man, I got a bunch of defective bees. <laughs> and then I started noticing that it's true for every single bee. So when I was thinking, I was like, that would be so cool if bee wings, if bees are right or left wing, just as humans are right or left handed. That seemed cool to me. <laughs> then one day when I was working on my project, I came across this bee. And then I was freaking out because, as you can see, the wing is torn. And I started freaking out because the sample had gotten damaged from transportation, or maybe I just somehow destroyed the wing, and I was afraid that I did something. So of course, I researched some more. I learned that as bees age, their wings tear and they rip. But amazingly, it has no effect on the flight. So already, something that defies laws of aviation can then fly with only half their wing. That amazed me. Recently, I've been interested in how flight works and the two wings on the bee. There's an upper and a lower wing. These are the hooks that are on the lower wing that connect to the upper wing. When they are connected, the bees can fly 15 miles an hour straight. Then one split second, it can unconnect the hooks and fly in any direction, even backwards. I've kept bees my whole life. I didn't know bees could fly backwards. I spent countless hours staring at them, and I didn't know that. So one of the reasons why I wanted to study bees is because bees are disappearing. It's this thing called colony collapse disorder, or CCD. Bees disappearing without a trace is an issue. Flowers, trees, fruit, vegetables, they all depend on honeybees. And I hope through my research, I can provide something for the scientists and the beekeepers alike, something that we can help the bees so they stop disappearing. I guess through, I never thought creativity could be found by sitting in a microscope or doing something science-related or something. I mean, this was a picture I found, and I found out that 
Bees have hair on their eyes. I mean, who knew that? Why do they have hair on their eyes? It's weird. So I've just found that creativity can be found in doing anything we love doing, as long as we don't think about it too hard. I found it while I was looking at the SEM. I've always found the beehive effective, and I hope that through my research, everything can go back together so the bees can be in harmony with the humans. And I really think that creativity can be found in everything. It probably won't be bees and science and microscopes for every single person in the audience, probably very few or any, but I guarantee you guys can find passion and creativity through anything that you do. Steve Jobs once said, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something and it seemed obvious to them after a while. This is completely true. When you think too hard about creativity, it just doesn't work right. When you aren't thinking and you're lost in something that you're doing, that is when you're gonna find your true creativity. So in my long journey of my science project, I've learned a few things that have helped me be creative. First, always have a piece of paper and a pencil. Might seem kind of weird, but the moment that you don't have those things, you're gonna get a good idea. By the time you find one, the idea will be gone. Second, don't give up. Anything that you guys are doing, you're always gonna face roadblocks, and sometimes roadblocks are the worst, but they always go away. My roadblocks were, I accidentally broke the SEM, or <laughs> I was waiting for B samples, or I just didn't have a time. I'm a senior in high school, who has time for this stuff? But eventually, I got time, or I fixed the machine, or all the roadblocks went away. And third, be passionate and confident with your, in your ideas. Creativity has to do with the mind and the heart. If your heart isn't in what you're doing, if you don't have passion in it, you're not going to be, be able to embrace your true creativity. So creativity is different for every person. You're not gonna be able to talk to the person next to you and you guys are be creative in the exact same ways, exact same things. For me, I found my creativity when I was a little girl and I built parachutes and elevators and different things when I was a girl. For every person, it's different though. And I believe that when I found my project, my B project, that that's also me being creative. And I wanna challenge each person in the audience to be creative like that. People always say, think outside the box. And I know I used to have a problem with that. But what I learned is, draw your own box. Don't fit in with the norms. Draw your own box and imagine what you believe creativity is. When I drew my box, it had to do with what I believed creativity was, what I was passionate about, and what defines me. I wanna challenge each person in the audience to be creative in their own special way and be lost in their passions so much that they find creativity. Thank you.